Today on this episode of Ron Seal Radio, we welcome Lauren Dunn, seasoned loan officer since 2012, military spouse and dedicated member of the Vend Veteran Lending Council. Lauren is passionate about helping veterans navigate the mortgage process and advocating for their housing needs. She'll discuss how the real estate and lending industries can better service veterans through VA loans and memberships in the Veteran Mortgage Advisor, VMA, and Veteran Housing Advisor programs. Welcome, Lauren. Glad to have you with us. Thanks, Ron. Glad to be here. A, a, I didn't realize that until I read your some of your stuff this morning. A um, what, how, did I, how did we put it in there? A military spouse. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's I mean, the spouses, uh, sometimes from some of the times I've talked to military men and women, sometimes I think the, 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 the active duty individual is out there working hard and the spouse has got a lot of the stress going on, not knowing what's going on. Is, did you find that? You know, I'm a newer military spouse of about a year, so I can't take too much credit. Um, my husband's been able to be here the whole time, but um, I have seen that with a lot of my clients uh, who are active duty and we're working with the spouses back home when they're purchasing a home. And um, the stuff that they go through is something that's very hard to relate to if you haven't done it yourself. You know, and that's one of the things that, that, you know, people like me who are big, big advocates for the military men and women, you know, we can talk all we want about, you know, being appreciative, but if you haven't walked in their shoes, and I know so many of them, so I've, I can speak from some semblance, is, you know, we just, we have no clue. We're clueless. Yeah. We can say that we understand, but we don't. So, you know, we can, all we can do is be very, very thankful. So, so why are the VA loans so important to you? Obviously, your, your spouse is a, is a veteran, but tell give us an idea there. Well, it's kind of twofold. I have the industry side and what I've seen in the industry and then a little bit of the personal side. So uh, yes, my husband's been in uh, the guard for 12 years. He did 10 years of full time and uh, some deployments and then doing drills now. Uh, my father served in the Navy Seabees back in the day and uh, my brother served. I have uncles and cousins. So it's kind of all around the family. And so I've been able to see um, you know, what amazing men and women the military has shaped them into being. And then I see some of the horror stories in the industry and, and kind of the way that our veterans and service members are underserved in the industry. And it's it's like you take these amazing people that have done and sacrificed so much and and then you leave them uh, without a home a week before closing, for instance, if, if some of the lenders out there don't know what they're doing. And so kind of a twofold, seeing both of those things happen at once is, uh, makes me very passionate, not just about you know, doing the best loans that I do, but also about educating the industries. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about that today. You know, it fascinates me because from my, my conversations, you know, the, the, the men and women of the military, when they're getting, getting ready to, for discharge, you know, they, they, there's so much and they're, they're really not focused on um, all these benefits that are out there. Right. And so many of them have no clue that they, you know, that, a they can go and buy a piece of property and it's going to get cost them in many instances less money to buy the property than just to go and find a lease to live in right how do you get that word out so you know it's marketing is is tricky sometimes right because there's so many different avenues for it and uh, you know as a non-veteran myself uh, it's it's like how, how do you reach more veterans and so um, educating other lenders, educating realtors. And um, I stay very involved locally and also on social media as well to try to get the word out and try to connect with these people to let them know like, hey, these are what your benefits are. Um, we teach classes, professional development classes at some of the local guard units here um, in one of my markets. And that's a great place to reach service members when they're still in and, and talk about like eligibility. When are you eligible? Because not everybody who served is eligible for the VA loan, for instance, and they might not know what those details are and they might have a false expectation of using their VA loan and then they can't use it because they didn't meet the time and service requirements. So um, things like that, just reaching them where they are and being able to explain about those benefits because you're absolutely right that when they're discharging or even sometimes when they're still in the service, um, that's listening to uh, some uh, you know talks about that is, the furthest thing from their mind at the moment. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, they, they don't get the information they need because they're focused on 
well, quite frankly, they're focused on staying alive yeah. in many instances, right? So when we come back, I want to continue our conversation. Educating others, does it matter which lender you use for a VA loan? Isn't a loan alone? We're going to talk about that. Continuing our conversation this morning, Lauren Dunn is with us. We are chatting about one of the best loans on the market, one of my favorites, because we can't do what we do if it wasn't for the men and women of the military. We honor them every single day on Ron Siegel Radio. And Lauren is an expert, not only in doing the loans, but in educating the community about you know this, this type of a loan, the, the community of borrowers, as well as the community of lenders. So she's taking on a big task there. And Lauren, I want to get into that with you is, you know, what's the big deal? I mean, you know, there's a, there's a, there's what, uh, 600,000 loan officers in the country. Can't they all do a VA loan? They can. Could they do it right? Not necessarily. And <laughs> okay. That's one of, some of the things we talk about is all lenders are authorized or approved to do VA loans. Uh, and you have amazing lenders out there who close a ton of business, are really, really good at their job, but just don't know VA. And that can create some big problems in the industry. So one of them, and, and I'm going to say it, I don't want you to, there is a big, big VA lender out there that I, I understand that members of the Veteran Lending Council end up having to bail out veterans because they get it wrong so often. Mm-hmm. What are some of the pitfalls that someone should look for? Well, so when you're choosing a VA lender, uh, you know, you've got your big box lenders and you've got your local lenders, right? And, and they spend their money on different things, frankly. So how do you know about the big box lenders? Because they're not in your community. So they're spending their money on marketing dollars and advertising, right? They're not spending their money or at least as much as they should be on training their staff on how to better help veterans, how to get your offers accepted, how to close smooth transactions, and frankly, sometimes how to even close a loan at all. That's it's pretty amazing. So one of the big things that, that I found, and, and I did go through the process of getting uh, certified as a veteran mortgage advisor, and I, I learned a tremendous amount, not nearly as much as uh, those of you that are teaching it. So I, I have to still listen to, to all my mentors there. But one of the things I hear is that, you know, I, from veterans is, well, I already used my, my eligibility. Mm -hmm. So I can't do it because I can't buy another house. Or I want to save it until I want to buy my forever home. What are your thoughts there? Right. So that's one of the common VA loan misconceptions that we hear all the time is that I can only have one VA loan at a time, or I can't use my VA loan multiple times. And both of those are false. So first of all, I won't go too deep into the eligibility dive, but uh, on a, on a kind of a 10,000 foot overview, uh, veterans, you can have more than one VA loan at a time and you can reuse it over and over again. Your entitlement is kind of like a credit card. So both of those things are true. And we've seen um, veterans have to, or active duty have to PCS to another duty station and not have time to sell their current home. And so okay, wait, they, you got to gotta, gotta, gotta back up, Lauren, you got to back yeah. up because many of us are, um, are, are simple people. What is a PCS? So PCS, permanent change of station, right? Gotcha. So if you have active duty service member at one base and then they suddenly get orders to go to another base. And that's when you see these active duty families up and have their lives uprooted and have to move states sometimes. Okay. So um, they can, so they can keep the prop. Can they keep the property that they're departing from? Cause you said it's like a credit card. So yeah. if they, a credit card, you know, you pay it off, then you can spend it again. So That's if right. they are in 29 Palms and they get a, cha a PCS to Virginia, mm -hmm. can, do they have to sell the 29 Palms house to go to Virginia? They do not. So they can rent it out and keep the VA loan. I've heard lenders say, oh, you have to refinance to conventional first before you buy another house. And now there may be circumstances where they want to do that, but they do not have to do that. And most of the case, uh, most of the time they won't. So they could keep the house in 29 Palms, rent it out, and then purchase another home in Virginia, also using their VA loans. And now you have two VA loans on your eligibility. So let's, let's look at it the other way around though, because we have so many people, you know, so much of, of California is pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. 
Right. So say you, you're living in Virginia. Now you've got a, a change of station to Camp Pendleton. Mm -hmm. Well, those properties are going to be a lot more money. Is there a limit to what you can spend? It's a great question. And it, prices in Virginia aren't necessarily inexpensive these days either in certain areas. Um, so when a veteran or active duty has full entitlement, meaning they they don't have a home loan at all, so they're buying their first home on a VA, there's no loan limit at all. So you could buy a $3 million house with zero down, assuming that you qualify for the payment with your income and assets, right? That's on the first house. So now in your example, Ron, if they're keeping the house in Virginia and moving to 29 Palms, there is a loan limit that applies, but it only applies for the zero down payment. So that calculation changes every year and it's different for everyone. So that's why working with an experienced lender and know, who knows how to do those calculations, you'll know if you can go in on that second home zero down or if you'll have a small down payment. Interesting. Okay. So there's, there's, there's a lot to this. I want to get into what some of the biggest myths are when we come back. Continuing our conversation, Lauren Dunn is with us. She is a guru in the VA home loan process. So, Lauren, I want to talk about what are some of the myths out there because, you know, it, it's easy to say, okay, well, I got a VA loan and I closed and everything went good and well. And, but the problem is, is that when it doesn't go, everything go as expected, that's when you need the guru. And what are some of those myths that we need to be uh, on alert for? That's right. Well, we hit a couple of the big ones earlier, which is that you can have more than one VA loan at a time and you can use your VA loan more, more than one time. Um, some of the other ones I see are, oh, VA loans take longer to close. Um, that can be true if you're working with a lender who don't, doesn't know what they're doing. Um, but for any lender who's taken VA training, especially the Veteran Mortgage Advisor course, and knows kind of those ins and outs and the nuances, that's not the case at all. Uh, my team regularly closes VA loans in you know 20 to 25 days. It's kind of our average. And you know, Ron, I'm sure you're similar. So just that message that we say over and over again of who you work with matters and why not to use some of those big box lenders. You know, one of the, one of the things that I found most um, exciting when I went through the course was the whole concept of the appraisal process. Can you go into that a little bit? Well, how long do I have? Because I could talk about <laughs> that for a while. <laughs> so yeah, the appraisal. So we get, you know, pushback from agents sometimes, a lot of misconceptions about the appraisal taking longer, the appraisal not coming in at value, all the appraisal repairs that may be required. Uh, so just to address those three items quickly, um, VA appraisals have scheduled and set timelines that the VA has published. They are slightly different per state, but they're usually eight to 10 business days. Um, so appraisals are going to come back within that you know one and a half to two week time frame in almost all, all cases. And I've seen conventional appraisals take longer over the last couple of years than VA appraisals. So that is not a thing. Um, also, the uh, the fact that they don't come in at value or the myth that they don't come in at value, uh, the VA itself published a statistic in uh, for 2023 that 92% of VA appraisals came in at or above value versus conventional came in about 80% of the time. So kind of getting that education and those statistics out there to let the industry know that, hey, VA appraisals are not as scary or don't take as long um, as other loan types even. And then on the property condition, um, VA does have certain items that they want fixed. They basically want the house to be in a good in good shape from a health and safety standpoint because they don't want a veteran moving into a home that has a ton of health and safety issues. So like, we could talk about that for a long time, but my best practice on that is get a good real estate agent, get a good lender and have the conversations with your agent and with the listing agent as you're making offers about what things might come up on the home and set everyone's expectations correctly and mitigate those issues before they become problems. You know, one of the things that I, I also really enjoyed was the fact that the Veterans Administration wants the veteran to get the property. Yes. Right. It, 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 as long as it's safe for them, they're willing to go out of their way to try and make that happen. Can you talk a little bit about that, especially, you know, especially in light of condos and, and the comparison between the, the, the VA loan and the FHA loan? Yeah, absolutely. So to hit the condos, um, VA condos are do have to go through a similar approval process to FHA, but also the documents that we need for condos is very similar to what you need on a conventional loan. 
So um, again, this is this is working with your team ahead of time as you're looking at properties and as you're making offers to do the research ahead of time. So part of my process, I'll talk to the HOA. If the HOA on a condo is not already approved, we can get it approved. And it doesn't really take too long. Um, and we know kind of the questions to ask ahead of time. One of the biggest issues with condos these days is insurance because the insurance world is changing. Um, sometimes we ask HOAs to change their deductible um, and that they have to be willing to do that. And again, that's on all loan types, not just VA. Um, and then the approval process can get waivers. So not to dive too deep, but if the HOA as a whole on a condo is declined and not accepted for VA, depending on the reason why, the veteran can work with the lender to actually request a waiver for that item and still be able to close on that home. And so many people don't know that's even an option. And that's very different from the, VA, uh, the FHA process for condos. FHA does not have that type of flexibility like VA does. So don't FHA my VA, as we like to say. There you go. And, and that's, you know, again, that goes back to the idea of having somebody that really understands the process. And I will say that, again, I, I went through the program, I, I listen, I learn, but there's so much more that, that the leadership at the veteran mortgage advisors know and are willing to share with membership. So talk a little bit to our, the loan officers that are listening today about why maybe they should go and, and uh, get uh, certified with the veteran mortgage advisors. Absolutely. Thank you. So we do have an online course. It's about eight hours of videos. And then there's a certification that you get, um, which is great and very important. But we offer a lot of ongoing support. And we've really built a community, which is one of those things that's it's kind of hard to explain until you've been in it. But I have seen this community that we've built for loan officers take people from not having any clue about VA, not knowing entitlement calculations, even some of that basic stuff, to really becoming known in their markets as the VA specialist and kind of the go-to person for VA. Um, so it's it the ongoing support and training that we provide. We have weekly, weekly coaching calls, kind of almost, I'd say, 24-7 uh, guidelines, support help. We have an amazing Facebook community. Uh, we have live events once a year. And we're also rolling out our Veteran Housing Advisor Program, which mirrors the Mortgage Advisor Program, but it's for real estate agents. So it really gives you an opportunity to pair with your real estate agents, make those relationships really sticky, have a nationwide referral network for each other, for other lenders and for realtors, and make sure when you're referring business back and forth, whether it's from a realtor to a lender or vice versa, that it's somebody who knows VA and that you know knows VA is going to take care of your service members and veterans better. It's a, it's a pretty amazing program. It is an amazing program, but I am going to throw one little extra to what you said. So, and I've shared this on, on our programs before. When my son was playing football, I took him on a, a recruiting trip or a scouting trip to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. And we were sitting there with the football coach. And he made the comment that if you're watching film, they still called it film, even though it's video. You know, if you watch it one time, you're gonna, it's good entertainment. If you watch it two times, okay, you might get something out of it. Three, four, five, six times, that's when you're really learning. And mm -hmm. I would say that when you, with even with the eight hours of great information that you just mentioned, a loan officer needs to go through that, all those videos, you know, three, four, five times, because there's no way that we can, we can uh, assimilate all of that information, because there is some really, really great stuff there. Um, and, and you guys have done an amazing job of putting that out, keeping it current. And I don't get to jump on the, the extra calls all the time, but, it's just an amazing group of people out there willing to help. And it's, you know, they say loan officer, loan officer, you know, that they're competitors. You know, as we're doing today, mm -hmm. you and I are doing a broadcast today to try and educate people. And we're not competitors. We both do loans, but we have the same mission. So we're on the same team. We're on the same team. And we have many, like I have many other veteran mortgage advisors in my markets. And I can't do every loan in the states that I'm in. And I would have to sleep sometime, right? So educating the community, having that abundance mindset and really helping each other out. Every time I have a CE class on VA or a class that realtors attend, I always invite other local lenders because we all need to learn and get better. And we're looking for the same thing. We're looking to, the bottom line is obviously we want to, to do business, but you know, the real, the, the overarching mission is to try and help those veterans get the homes and get these services 
that they so richly deserve and have earned. And I, I really appreciate you coming on, Lauren, and helping us out. And, and hopefully you'll come back because I know we didn't get to three quarters of the things we wanted to talk about. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on and 